Williams, and a pleasant good evening to all who are viewing and listening. This evening I present the Health Emergency Operating Committee Situation Report for Wednesday, August 18th. This evening I begin by reminding us all about the COVID-19 protective measures and behaviors, which includes wearing a face mask appropriately covering both the nose and the mouth, sanitizing your hands with soap and water or an alcohol-based sanitizer, maintaining a safe distance of six feet or more from persons with whom you interact, boosting your immune system and staying at home when ill or ordered to do so. These measures are effective in reducing the impact of the pandemic the response to the COVID-19 pandemic continues here in the Federation of St. Kitts and Nevis. During the period May 19th to August 18th, we have seen an increase of 663 cases, confirmed cases, of which 545 persons have recovered. There are currently 115 active cases with seven hospitalizations and three COVID-19 related deaths. The map currently shown on the screen indicates the parishes most affected by the COVID-19 cases as of August 18th. Please note that it is the more densely populated areas that are most affected. Therefore, to summarize our current situation, the Federation has a total of 708 confirmed cases of COVID-19, with 683 cases in St. Kitts and 25 cases in Nevis. 590 cases have fully recovered. We now have 115 active cases, seven hospitalizations, and three COVID-19 related deaths. Our contact tracing efforts continue. During the period May 19th to present, approximately 18,392 samples have been processed in the Federation. Also, the vaccine program continues. And by the end of day, Tuesday, August 17th, 72.9% of the target population had received their first dose and 61.5% of the target population had received their second dose. Persons who would have received their first dose of the vaccine between June 3rd and 30th are asked to return for their second dose since four weeks or more would have elapsed since receiving their first dose. Please note that if you would have received your first dose by June 9th, 10 weeks would have elapsed and so that you can go and receive your, your second dose now. Also, if you would have received your first dose as of the 16th of June, nine weeks would have elapsed and you are now able to go for your second dose. Please note that the current batch of vaccines will expire on August 31st. Pregnant women are at an increased risk of getting severely ill from COVID-19 and experiencing adverse pregnancy outcomes as preterm birth. It is therefore recommended for pregnant women to be vaccinated against COVID-19. In the Federation, the vaccine will be administered to a pregnant female upon submission of a letter from her obstetrician gynecologist granting clearance. The Federation has received the US government's donation of Pfizer-BioNTech vaccines to Caribbean nations. The first of three shipments of, of 11,700 doses was received last Thursday, August 12th. Preparation has been made to receive, store, distribute, and administer these vaccines. 
We now have universal eligibility for vaccine administration. So therefore, persons 12 years and above will be able to receive the Pfizer-BioNTech vaccine. Our health and travel protocols have been updated. For fully vaccinated passengers entering the Federation, you, are, you will be required to remain either in a government-approved COVID-19 hotel or quarantine facility, or you may apply for, to be quarantined in your private residence for a period of four days. The COVID-19 test sample will be taken on day four. The passenger will remain in quarantine for the period and will be released upon receiving a negative RT-PCR test. For non-vaccinated passengers, you will be required to remain in quarantine for at least 14 days in a government facility and shall not be and shall be released in accordance with the provisions of the COVID-19 Act. Children under 18 who are traveling with their fully vaccinated parents will be subject to the same quarantine time as their parents. Additionally, a notice of quarantine will be issued to inbound passengers for which they have to sign on arrival in the Federation. The form outlines the length of quarantine stay and all quarantine regulations. But please note, on day four, your sample will be taken between the, hours of, between the hour of 7 a.m. and 8 a.m. And this will be done in St. Kitts at three locations, the JN France General Hospital, the Poxon Hospital, and the Mary Charles Hospital. In Nevis, the test will be taken at two locations, the Disaster Management Building and the Gingerland Health Center. Please note that you are required to use only COVID-19 certified transportation to drive to and from the hospital or testing site to have your exit sample taken. You must wear a mask, a face mask, and sanitize during this trip. There are currently two SARS-CoV-2 variants in circulation, the Delta variant and the Lambda variant. The Delta variant was first identified in India. It is one of several variants of concern as designated by the CDC and the World Health Organization. It is the most contagious version of the coronavirus thus far and it is spreading rapidly worldwide. There are five important things about the Delta variant. One, it is the most contagious, contagious as I previously mentioned. It is spreading 50% faster than the Lambda variant, which was 50% more contagious than the original strain. Unvaccinated persons are at risk Persons who are not fully vaccinated against COVID-19 are most at risk. The Delta variant can lead to hyper-local outbreaks, whereby the, the virus will hop and skip and jump from one poorly vaccinated area to another. There is still more to learn about the Delta variant, but we must note that vaccination is the best protection against this variant. The AstraZeneca vaccine was 60% effective against symptomatic disease and 93% effective against hospitalization. The Pfizer-BioNTech vaccine is 88% effective against symptomatic disease and 96% effective against hospitalization. Living with COVID-19 requires adherence to the COVID-19 protective measures and behaviors. So I, as I close this afternoon, I will remind you again, as these are the measures that will help us to reduce the impact 
of the virus on our federation. Wearing a face mask, appropriately covering both the nose and the mouth, sanitizing your hands with soap and water or an alcohol-based hand sanitizer, maintaining a safe distance of six feet or more from persons with whom you interact, staying at home when ill or when ordered to do so, and finally, accept the vaccine and get vaccinated. For confirmed cases, boost your immune system in order to recover speedily. And this includes eating healthy, getting adequate hydration, rest, exercise, and of course, taking your multivitamins. The Delta variant is here and will be the cause of the next big surge in the Federation. But with preparation, we can mitigate its consequences. Let us all work together to reduce the impact of this disease. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thank you.